What is up guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Today we're going to be hopping back on the Tesla CyberQuad project. On the previous part one video, I went over all the parts that I'm using, how to wire up the Kunray controller to make the motor spin the other way or reverse the polarity. And I also went over the differences between the stock 500 watt brushed motor compared to the new 1000 watt MY1020 motor that we're installing. Today we're actually going to install the motor on the rear swing arm. I just got to modify the mount bracket along with the rest of the Kunray kit. So let's get started. Before we start installing the controller and wiring up a bunch of components on the cyber quad, I want to figure out where these seven wire connectors hook up to. Unfortunately, none of them are labeled and there's very limited information or wiring diagrams available for this bike online. It should be pretty simple to figure out with a process of elimination approach. There's, there's very limited components on this bike. Like on the front, there is a brake handle, an LED light bar, a thumb throttle, a forward and reverse switch. And then on the back, you got the LED taillight a mode switch and an on off switch. I'm just going to start tracing each wire individually and start labeling them one by one. All right, I think I got everything figured out. The two pin connector with black and red going to the back is for the on off switch. The three pin connector with black, white, and red going to the back is for the brake light. One is ground, one is power, one is a signal wire. The two pin connector going to the back with blue and red is for mode switching, high and low. And then the other four connectors going to the front. There are two connectors going to the front that are black, blue, and red. Just so we don't get them confused like I initially did, obviously. Thicker gauge wiring is for the brake and the throttle is the thinner one. Or another way to look at it is the larger clip, the one with this tab right here is for the throttle. And then the smaller clip with the tabs on the side is for the brake. Forward and reverse switch, this thing is a two pin connector with red and yellow. And then the LED headlight is a two pin connector with black and yellow. And to simplify things, I'm gonna start removing the parts that we're no longer gonna be using, such as this thumb throttle and this forward and reverse switch. I'm also gonna tuck away the connectors we're no longer gonna be utilizing, such as this speed selector and on off switch. Since the new thumb throttle that we're installing has the built-in forward and reverse switch and speed selector. And I'm likely gonna be installing a panel here that will have the keyed ignition. So we're no longer gonna need this on off switch either. So that should clean things up. Then we'll throw in the controller. What's pretty interesting about removing the factory thumb throttle is you don't just loosen the Allen, Allen bolt like you usually do on most e-bikes and whatnot. They actually have this tab on the inside that sticks out to keep it from, I guess, rotating. You can see that there's a scratch from factory installing it. So I'm not really sure why they did that. They want to make it an extra pain in the ass to remove this so you don't try to modify it. So it turns out there's no need to cut the tab off. You just need to take the three millimeter Allen bolt out all the way. And this metal ring actually separates from the whole housing. So you slide this housing off, pry this with a flathead and slide the ring off. And then you can just reassemble it. After taking a closer look at the bottom side of the switch panel, I've decided to keep this forward and reverse switch in place. 
and just repurpose it as an on off switch since it essentially does the same exact thing. It's just two wires. One setting just breaks the circuit and the other one completes it, which is exactly the same thing an ignition switch does. You key it on, it completes the circuit, you key it off, it breaks it. So I think it looks a lot cleaner this way if I were to just keep this in place and install the same two pin style connector from the ignition switch. I was initially having an issue with the sticky throttle. I think the inside of the twist grip was making friction or dragging on the black anodized surface. So I sanded it smooth with some 240 grit and then some 400 grit and now it stopped sticking. After doing some further research regarding MY1020 gearing, it appears to be more appropriate to install a larger sprocket than the factory one in combination with the 11 tooth T8F motor sprocket. The larger sprocket, this one is a 54 tooth. This will give it a lot more low end torque and help it pick up speed a little bit quicker. Yes, the smaller stock sprocket can produce a higher top speed but it will be very sluggish and slow to pick it up to get there. This will make it easier for it to accelerate from a stop. Careful not to lose this dowel key. This is what keeps the sprocket from rotating on the shaft. Make sure you put this back in when you reinstall the sprocket. There is also a locking screw that keeps it from sliding back and forth. Check out the size difference between the original sprocket and the new 54 tooth sprocket.
and here's how we're looking so far. If I put a bolt through the back right mounting hole, it positions the motor so the front sprocket is perfectly aligned with the rear sprocket as far as chain alignment. So I'm gonna use that as a baseline to mount the motor in place. And then I'm gonna drill the motor mount bracket through the holes at the bottom of the swing arm to figure out the correct location for the other three mounting holes. And then we're gonna fix the chain slack by taking out a couple links. I'm thinking maybe four or five links will do it, which will make the chain the perfect length. So we might not even have to use a tensioner at all. I'm gonna be using this T8F chain that came with the Kunray brushless kit, uh, which comes with a quick link that I can easily remove, shorten the chain and reconnect it. And to shorten the chain, I'm using the chain detacher. I just got this one from Amazon. If you are interested in checking out any of the items that we are using for the Tesla project, I will have everything linked in the description below. So I'm glad that I got the chain to the right length before I drilled the holes, because now that I'm rotating it, it does seem like there's too much tension the way this is. So I am gonna have to move the motor back ever so slightly and redrill all four holes to get this thing to line up correctly. Here's a closer look at how the motor ended up being mounted, top and bottom side. As far as alignment goes, it is perfectly lined up and there's just enough chain slack to not need a tensioner. No resistance. As of right now, I have everything for the controller hooked up except for the brake switch, brake light, and headlight. I'm gonna take care of those items when the CX50 battery connector comes in, which should be sometime next week. For now, I wanna make sure that the MY1020 motor is fully functional in both forward and reverse. Uh, so I'm temporarily connecting the terminals directly to the battery, of course, with the inline 30 amp fuse, just for testing purposes. Quick reminder, this controller is hooked up, so it's reverse polarity. Since this motor is hooked up the other direction, I ended up just switching the yellow and green wires on the um, hall sensor connector, and I switched the blue and yellow wires. I just crisscrossed them on the phase wires. Green is still to green. If you want more details on how to reverse the polarity or the rotation of your motor, check out the part one video. Let's go see if this thing works. Certainly seems like it's gonna be faster than the 
10 miles an hour it originally was. I'm excited to take this thing out. Seat slides right on with no clearance issues. There's plenty of room under it, though I don't have it currently bolted down since I think Anton has the hardware for it. But this thing is almost ready to hit the road. I just have to wire up the lights and install the actual battery connector that we're using. Then we're gonna take this thing out for its first official top speed test. If you enjoyed today's video or found it helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, wanna keep up with some of my projects, such as the Cyber Quad or my Talaria or any of my other bikes, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching. Oh, two.